Hi, this is Tom for PokerVIP.com and welcome to part one of a four-part series on Pot Lemon Omaha here at Tony Black. So we've done a four-part series on this site before. We're going to continue in much the same vein. Um, just exploring uh, how to play Pot Lemon Omaha in a profitable uh, way on what is a reasonably soft environment. So left on the table, we've got some uh, PLA 50 going on. Right on the table, we've got PLA 25. Uh, you might see one or two people sitting on both. Um, so yeah, it's going to have a slight difference in terms of stakes. But um, other than that, I don't think there'll be an enormous noticeable difference uh, between the standard of play on either table. There is going to be a slight difference uh, between the tables being four-handed and six-handed, and we should be adjusting uh, accordingly. Um, needless to say, fewer players there are, the more we can loosen up. Um, but other than that, I think uh, everything should be relatively standard. We're going to continue playing quite a value-heavy uh, style. And um, yeah, we'll just see if we can find some uh, nice, interesting um, spots as a result. Um, so uh, we're up a little bit on the left-hand table. Uh, just before I started recording, we managed to pick up a uh, 20 euro profit, um, which slightly changes stack to pot ratios um, on the left hand table, given that we're now 150 big blinds deep. But, um, you know, we'll cross that when we get to it. We obviously cover one player. Um, other two either have similar or indeed bigger stacks than us. On the left-hand table, we are going to be opening our double-suited hand in a four-handed spot. And on the uh, right-hand table, I'm actually going to make a tight fold when I do not have the ace-high flush draw. Um, with just the jack-high flush draw, it's going to create quite a few problems. Um, interesting spot on the left-hand table. Um, I think with a pair, a flush draw, and a gut shot, we are going to bet. If we can pick it up, it's absolutely fantastic. If it's called, we still have reasonable equity. Uh, and we're now going to play this, I think, as a check call turn, fold river spot. Uh, if he checks back the turn, we are likely good, although not always. Um, so it's a question of what we do on river. And I actually, I think, favor either going very small uh, to exploit or potentially checking to potentially induce off either a weaker flush draw or a straight trying to value bet me, which I think is the route I'm actually going to go. Occasionally I get value in by the jack high flush, but I think that's literally the only hand I should be afraid of there. As it is, we just win, which is a reasonable outcome. Uh, as I said, I don't mind going something around a third pot, maybe even less on river. I don't think sizing up uh, any bigger than that makes any sense. Uh, we're going to be folding versus three bet. And is relatively polarized with a pair and anytime we're going to be calling a three bet we need a hand that is going to flop well um, and pairs are going to be more polarized and flop worse um, as a result they're going to play worse in three bet spots so calling them is going to be reasonably unprofitable especially when out of position uh, left hand table we have a reasonable hand some merit to three betting. I'm actually going to go for the call though, I think. And we will evaluate what flops bring. Uh, on the right hand table, we have a pretty sick spot when the three bet comes in from the button and an overcall. It does illustrate how loose the games are with the overcalls. Our hand actually doesn't flop that well. I'm going to come back to that in a sec. I am going to be check folding on a board that is pretty terrible for us and is going to hit one or both of my opponent's ranges. And here we have a choice to either conceivably four bet if I think my opponents are very, very loose. Um, and as I said, the hand doesn't flop particularly well. So we are, like, calling is easily the worst play. So I'm going to make a tight fold. And we're going to fold when we completely miss in a spot that it's conceivably hit a button range quite hard. So an interesting spot for the three bet pot when the ace comes down on a reasonably droid board as well. Uh, on the left hand table we have a beautiful double suited hand. It's 
going to flop pretty well. And in a four-handed game, I'm actually totally fine with three betting this. Um, against UTG in a six-handed game, I would just be calling. But I think in this instance, three betting well in position is going to show a reasonable profit. A uh, reasonable flop uh, with two pair and open ender and backdoor flush potential. We're going to start our betting. Checking has some merit, although I believe it caps range in a spot where our runouts can potentially be somewhat disastrous. Turning a flush draw as well, I'm pretty firmly in the camp that Queen Jack should raise flop, so I'd be surprised if it hasn't. Having said, I'm going to check back and bluff catch river, I think. And I'm just going to call here. Uh, if my hand did not contain three clubs, it's entirely reasonable for me to three bet. Uh, so we're only really worried about seven six here. We block Jack seven. We block Queen Jack. Uh, so we're going to go for a little bit of value. And unfortunately, my opponent's hit seven six. That is somewhat annoying. Uh, but he's drawing very very thin on flop. Um, I think he likely calls turn, to be totally honest, with a hand like 10-9. Um, I'm actually somewhat surprised that hasn't raised flop. Um, it does also illustrate what a raggy hand he's willing to call three bets with, um, which is certainly something to pick up on. Uh, but yeah, that's a bit of an unfortunate event. Uh, I'm a bit surprised he didn't actually value bet himself. Um, but there we go. Uh, and I'm just going to check two pair down here. I don't see any way we get called by a one pair hand, which is effectively what we're beating on River. Um, there are a considerable number of better two pair combos. Uh, very few straight combos, because truthfully they should bet. And we are going to be defending on the left hand table. Flopping a pair in a backdoor flush draw is absolutely fine to just check back and evaluate what the turn brings. Uh, on the right hand table, I have to be right about one in four times? One in three times. Maths is fun. Uh, we're going to continue checking here and see if we pick up any additional outs. Um, I think I'm just going to let that go. Because there's, very, there's a number of ace threes, ace fives. Basically, he has to be betting either a naked bluff or jack five in that spot, which. It's a part of range, but it's such a small part of range, I really don't see how we should be calling versus it and expect to be winning in the in the uh, long term. A uh, reasonably rubbish hand on the left-hand table. And, excuse me, going to be folding button as well. Fairly pretty hand on the left-hand table. Uh, Going to be open button. Would certainly be in a spot given how uh, light Janine called my last three bet. Would certainly be a spot I would have considered three betting the button. And I'm going to be calling any three bet uh, off the big blind with a hand that flops pretty well and position. Uh, we do indeed get three bet. This is absolutely standard call. No incentive to four bet. Uh, we'll basically turn the hand into a bluff every time we do, so let's just call and see what we can hit. Two pairs, reasonable start to proceedings. Blocking the Queen-Jack-10 draws. Uh, he decides to lead. The slight problem I have is that my hand has uh, basically flopped as good as it can get, and any turns and rivers are going to generally cause problems for me in the form of straight cards and plush cards. So we are going to make a raise and call off, I think, is absolutely fine. We're blocking three kings, we're blocking three nines. Occasionally we're going to be up against aces with a flush draw. And we may open on the right-hand table. And just winning is an absolutely fine result. Uh, winning risk-free money is never going to be a terrible outcome. Um, I expect he folds bare aces, king x with... Uh, no particular redraw is going to fold there as well, um, or should fold there. Um, and given how deep he is, it's pretty reasonable to assume he knows what he's doing. We flop a bit of bottom pair here. 
do have a backdoor flush draw, we have a backdoor straight draw. I actually feel my hand is weak enough that I do have to bluff this. Um, if I had a seven, I'm probably checking back, but I actually think the five is weak enough. I should be bluffing here. And it's kind of like bluffing with potential. That being said, the four completes the number of straight draws, number of two pair outs, so we're just going to be shutting down now. Um, we can continue on any diamond, any king, any ten, any ace. So a good number of cards we could have continued on, but unfortunately this just isn't one of them. Which is a little annoying, but yeah, it is what it is. Pot size bet here is basically terrible. Um, given I've capped my range, he really should be going small to try and squeeze any value off a hand I can have. And if he's bluffing, he doesn't need to bet this big for a bluff to be successful. So either way, it's going to be far from optimal. But as it is, he wins, which is nature of the beast. Um, but interesting to note that he's pot sizing in a spot which a pot size bet makes no sense in. In effect, he's risking more money than he needs to and is probably costing himself value by basically polarizing range in a spot where my hand does not play well versus a polarized range. So um, it's a common mistake you see at reasonably low stakes PLO that people, when they have a hand, get excited and pop that. And um, yeah, it's not particularly uncommon, but uh, something that if you feel that you are doing yourself it's something to be mindful of and a habit to remove uh, i could have button raised that um somewhat mindful that i got three bet last time um this is significantly stronger though given that we do have a not suit so i am going to be opening it uh the presence of three spades is yeah somewhat detrimental getting three bet here is not ideal uh, his three bet range is going to contain a lot of aces, a lot of better um, ace x hands. Um, so I actually think folding here is a reasonable win out of position. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I think the hand plays poorly enough versus the three bet range that folding is going to be the least worst option. Straight back in on the left hand table with a pretty nice hand though. And the threes we're just going to be folding. Um, just a flat-out awful hand. Nothing more needs to be said, really. Uh, so I think my opponent's going to be raising small blind to big blind too wide. I'm going to be exploiting this by three betting with a hand that plays reasonably well and can call a four bet, although that is not the outcome I desire. Okay, dokes. Well, let's call and try and hit a nice flop. It's actually a pretty good flop, to be totally truthful. When we flop a pair, uh, an open ender and a backdoor flush draw with three live over cards, we are just going to be getting it in versus his range. Expectancy aces a lot. That's annoying. Chop it up. Okay. Always makes you worry. Uh, but as it is, we're ahead of his range with uh, our outs marginally. Granted, uh, on flop, but we are ahead of it. Somewhat surprised to see his four bet queens, but maybe he's getting wise to the fact that I in no way respect his open ranges. Um, but if you are going to be three betting someone reasonably wide, um, given you think he's opening too wide and you do flat out don't respect him, then uh, three betting with hands that flop pretty well and can continue versus four bets is a pretty good option. Um, doing it with pairs that just don't flop particularly well is going to cause us a lot of problems. Rundowns, uh, pseudo connector type hands are just going to flop so much better and um, hence why I included that in my 3-bet range. Uh, we 3-bet here to try an ISO uh, against Johnny and flop an open ender in a spot that it does actually help my opponent's ranges considerably more than mine. So I'm going to check, take one off, see if we can improve. Uh, if I happen to get a free card, awesome. If not, we are going to check all and try and bink the turn, I believe. That's the wrong straight from my point of view. And we are going to be check folding this if he happens to go for it. Um, going to be defending the connected king and just folding this. Um, 10 and an open ender, we're going to be checking, most likely check calling, unless he really goes for it. And I don't really need to turn my hand into 
a bluff here. Flush gets there, which I guess is a thing. Uh, I'm basically beaten hands that are totally missed. Um, I'm either losing to ace 10. That's bizarre, but I guess getting 7 to 1, I kind of have to call just to see what he has. I mean, I'm not going to be surprised to see a weak flush here. I'm not going to be surprised to see ace 10, but I guess for 7 to 1, I'm right often enough. And he has a weak flush. Yep. That's a really interesting hand to have opened UTG, but sure. Interesting to note how loose some players are playing currently. Uh, double seed we are going to be opening. And just winning, which is fine. And... Opening on button, we'd much prefer that the flush draw was a bit higher than the 8 high, but we're still doing reasonably well versus two random ranges and the blinds. And we're going to be opening on the right-hand table with a fairly pretty hand in a five-handed game. Uh, we do have the ace of a club blocker. And an 8. In a spot that it actually favours my opponent's range, so I'm going to be checking here and probably continuing if a club or an 8 comes off, potentially an ace as well. Uh, I'm going to be checking the queen and gut shot on the left-hand table. Uh, when my opponent leads, it doesn't actually make a phenomenal amount of sense. So I'm going to put a small raise in with the intention of barreling rivers that do not pair the board. Uh, I'm going to continue checking my queen. Calls. And we are going to barrel the river. I expect the only hand that can conceivably call here is the king I flush. Everything else should fold at this point. And we get it through. Chalk one up for the good guys. Um, limp under the gun gets the respect it deserves on the right hand table. Um, the only real question I have is if my opponent's conceivably going to back raise, which I don't really anticipate, um, but I guess you never know. My hand doesn't flop fantastic, but for an extra 50 cents we are calling and hoping to connect, and if we do not, we lose three big blinds, which is effectively nothing, so I think the risk reward scenario is probably going to favor us. Um, flopping just the bear king with some straight blockers is probably not going to be what I would consider a dream result. I'm going to be folding the jack 8-9 here. Um, and Johnny continues in a fairly scary board. He can get raised on fairly frequently given the variety of draws out there. So given that, that he has continued on that board, I will treat it with some respect to the fold. Plus my hand has very limited ways to improve. Going to be just calling here. 3-betting is aggressive, but has some merits. That being said, I prefer to just realize the equity, I think. Going to be folding on the right-hand table. Hand that looks far, far better than it actually is. Uh, with a considerable number of non-nut draws. This run out is fairly, well, terrible. Um... It's pretty clear my opponent doesn't have much. That being said, I do think he probably gets stubborn with some two pairs here, given I am um, played a fairly passive line. And that would be a two pair combo. Gonna be opening the button. Seems reasonably standard. And opening queens on the button as well. We want to be opening the button um, with a reasonable frequency, given that we are going to bet, pick up on a decent number of flops. Um, and much like any other form of poker, um, we want to be aggressive on the button and just attempt to uh, maximize the edge we have in position. When my opponent leads on this kind of board, fairly terrifying. 
So certainly a bet in a heads-up spot. The Queen's really a question of what do I do in a three-handed spot. I'm probably going to be checking back. Opening the left-hand table with a reasonably strong ace. Some pros and cons here. We are going to be continuing with pair and backdoor flush draw and gut shot. And I'm going to be folding the queens there. Unfortunately, I do block queen jack, but there are enough uh, two pair combos, etc., that are folding. Uh, question on turn is whether I bet or check. Checking has some merit in that my hand is potentially good. Um, betting has the merit that I deny equity to hands that are drawing versus me. And I have considerably more full houses than my opponents. So I think betting small here actually has a reasonable amount of merit. Um, it's only really 8-7 and a 7 which can do much about it. Uh, so it's not something I would do every single time because if we... Uh, if we bet every single time in that instance, it becomes exploitable and people are going to start playing back at us. But mixing it in um, as a randomizer is going to show a reasonable result. Um, and we have reasonable equity against all but full houses, and we are blocking the best full house. Um, you know, if we, and, and plus, if we can get something like ace queen to fold on that kind of turn, it's fantastic for us. Um, it's uh, going to obviously greatly improve our win rate the times we get better hands to fold. So a bear ace queen there has a quite a job calling uh, the turn. And uh getting that kind of fold to uh, that kind of hand sorry to fold that kind of equity is going to be a very good result for us. Uh, on the right hand table uh getting limped under the gun again. This is something we're gonna see at the smaller stakes. Um again if you find yourself doing this in a pot in Omaha game, rapidly reconsider why you're doing it and stop it, basically. <laughs> um, six takes the bottom end of the straight draw and a weak flush draw. Um, limp spot, though, we are going to be peeling one, but being cautious on non nut turns. That would most definitely be a non nut turn. It also could be the 10 8 and the queen 10. Um, so basically, our straight draw is next to dead in all probability. Um, and the times it's not, we're just not going to be able to extract value from it, and our flush draw is not particularly strong either, so we are going to be folding if any money goes into the middle of this pot. Um, yeah, pretty much a brick. Can't see uh, any two-pair combos, of which there are some ever folding here, so we're just going to check and find a better spot. And ace jacks, not hugely surprising. And most certainly a hand that we can never get to fold there for a single bet. Trips, pretty easy fold. Let me opening the button again. Somewhat disjointed king, but it is more connected than appears in first instance getting three bet is not spectacularly good news i still think with johnny likely over calling it does mean the call is just about profitable but i'm not thrilled with the spot uh flopping the nuts is a pretty good start to things not gonna lie that's generally gonna be good don't have a redraw with it so we are going to play this pretty hard and fast So we have a SPR of about three. Johnny has one of about two and a smidge. Diamonds doesn't really matter because he's covering us. So we're going to go pretty large here and jam every turn conceivable that is in the heart. And if our opponents want to get it in here, um, yeah, it's not unreasonable, especially on a site like Tony Bet that has the option of running it twice, um, which we may well want to do versus a flush draw. Going to be calling it off. That's the first one. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, well. <sighs> Short one up, I guess. That is an incredibly strong hand that I have absolutely no conceivable idea why he did not three-bet. Um, that is 
One of the strongest hands you could ever see in Potlim and Omaha. The fact he's not three betting that out of the small blind is, well, ridiculous, frankly. Um, yeah. That's an incredibly, incredibly passive way to play that hand. So we have a weird mix of players that are playing very, very strong hands, incredibly passive, and players that are playing a very wide range, open limping too wide, and also calling three bets out of position incredibly wide. So it's a very weird mishmash. And um, on a site like this that does not allow HUDs or tracking software, then taking notes is going to be the absolute best way to... Um, you know, make a note of this. And if I was a, a reg in this game, and I was playing this game long term, um, then I would be making large numbers of notes. I'd be color coding things. Um, I know I have notes on some players on this site from the previous series I did. And yeah, I'd, I'd uh, be making, um, you know, real detailed notes, for example, of somebody not three betting ace king jack five double suited out of a small blind. Um, that is is just a, a, a slam dunk three bet. So yeah, an interesting uh, interesting thing to see. If a little surprising. Uh sevens again pretty awful hand. Um even on the button that's not gonna cut it unfortunately. Aces and we're going to be three betting here and just trying to ISO the short stack. Um, you know, if we can just get a heads up with this guy, you know, it's it's a fantastic result. If anyone wants to four bet us, um, that's fine. We have the best hand. Um, and like any any calls of the three bet are one incredibly fishy, and two, um, you know, frankly, are going to be instances where we uh, are going to play the hand in position anyway. We're not thrilled at this. We do block the NFD. We do have a large rat straight draw, so we're basically only dead versus a flush draw, which I don't think he leads too frequently, so I guess we close our eyes and get it in. Okie dokes. That is the first one. That is the second one. Um, and this just illustrates by 3-betting when we're altering the stack to pot, uh, you know, when we're three betting, our stack spot ratio is getting smaller and smaller. Um, you know, hands such as that are just going to increase in hand strength um, just because we don't really have to play further streets against a stack, a stack size that's that small. Um, you know, if we're in a single race pot or we're playing against someone who's 200 big buys deep, um, then it gets quite terrifying getting led into in a spot like that um, where they can have sets they can have straights they can have second up draw uh, second up flushes that just aren't folding but when our opponent has slightly more than a pot size bet left um it just becomes an instance where we just basically have to close our eyes and just say you know what in all probability we have the best hand we are beating his range and we you know we're just unfortunate if we happen to run into the nuts uh, i'm going to open our ace uh would again prefer if it were a nut suit but it is going to be strong enough and folding on the right hand table when we get three bet our hand is going to play spectacularly badly versus the three bet uh and we're out of position just to boot and our opponent is playing less than 100 big blinds so the stacked pot is even smaller all of which mean it's not going to be particularly good news for us uh we're going to be betting our two bet here for value And we're going to be opening the button at the shorter stake table. That is not friendly. Um, so I think my plan here is probably just call and evaluate what he does on turns. If he starts absolutely tattooing it, I am probably going to start believing that he has jack seven and up. Ooh, we're going to check back with pair and gut shot. Uh, we're now beating three sevens in this instance. We are also beating Jack X that raised for reasons I wouldn't possibly understand. And we're also beating hands like the 875 draw, the 753 draw. So we're going to be calling again. Oh, oh I hate spots like this. Um, <sighs> 
It is conceivable my opponent just flopped jack six and just went for it. That said, given that I have very likely have a jack here, it's entirely plausible he gets bigger in that instance. I'm beating six is full. I'm beating five is full, although that doesn't really exist. I'm beating eight, seven. And there really aren't many four houses that really exist in my reign. And we win. Nice. And uh, just because there are very few full houses that actually exist in my range, it makes sense for my opponents to um, bluff in that spot. But we bluff catch, we win a nice pot. And now that that's come to the half an hour period, that actually does wrap up our video. Nice little hand to end the video on and a uh, nice little profit on the session. So um, with that being said, uh, as before, if you have any comments, any feedback, any questions, uh, by all means, drop it in the comment section below and I will get back to you as soon as I see it. I check the videos reason, you know, once a day or so just to uh, answer any questions, queries that people have. Um, if you haven't checked out my Poker VIP Coaches page, feel free to do that, drop a comment there. And uh, with that being said, I have been Tom for PokerVIP.com and hopefully I will see you for part two.